Bang. What does it mean? What does it mean? To be happy in a world where the whole, every country everywhere is trying to go after your internet. That's basically what the news is this week. Uh, we've got European Wikipedia sites go dark to protest copyright reform. We've got that the EU internet copyright bill was rejected. Hooray, I think. I don't know a ton about it, to be completely honest. We've got kids trapped in caves in Thailand and Elon Musk trying to save them. God. Apparently that makes sense. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> also, Uganda has a new uh, social, Uganda has a new social media tax which is like actually incredibly expensive compared to how much people make in general over there. This There's... is not the way. <laughs> Roll the intro. <laughs> Where is it? Good. It's good. Oh no. Couch, couch, couch. Uh, someone sent me a message on the forum and they thought that Lance is wearing a Tunnel Bear shirt here. And it actually really looks like it. I, I see it. It's not, but I, I see No, it. I asked Ed and he showed me it's like a it's a box. That's Yay, no Fresh white catch book. The white bar underneath is like uh says unboxing. Yeah. Yay, PIA. PIA. If you uh need to get around uh certain social taxes in Uganda. And yay, LTX! You don't need a VPN there because you'll be doing interactive stuff in, in like real life and things. Because it's fun and good. Public internet access. Yeah. Um, so let's let's start at the top. Uh, Wikipedia did a little bit of a protest in the EU um, to protest copyright reform, and how they did that was they basically turned off two different sites within Wikipedia. So when you go to Wikipedia, you pick your language, and each one of those is essentially kind of its own thing. So I believe they turned off the France and Spain, something like that. Um, oh no, no, it's Italy, and Spanish Spain. and Italian, the Spanish and Italian editions while in Europe were were off, essentially. So if you went to the site, you just saw this giant block of text that was like... By the way, that was posted by Mains on the forum. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. My main user. Yeah. You just saw a bunch of text that was like, hey, you're not seeing information. You're seeing a description of what they're trying to do and the ways that it will affect your internet Look at this nice internet, internet, internet we got going on right now. There we go. Whew. That was slow. I don't think that was Engadget's fault. I think that's us. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that that sucks for anyone who had to research anything at that point in time. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I guess you could probably just go to a different version of Wikipedia and, like, translate the page or whatever. But, Ugh, yeah. So this happened ahead of the European Parliament's final vote on the controversial EU copyright directive, uh, which is the first time the region is updating its copyright laws since 2001. They're ostensibly trying to modernize them, but it kind of looks like it's it's a war between content creators, like like uh, movie studios and the record business, business versus the, record business. the giant decentralized internet of people who just want to remix and create and upload. Like memes. That, that's yes. been at the center of this for a little while. That's how a lot of people have actually heard about this, is the meme problem. But it's, it has to do with a lot of other things as well. And the link tax. Yeah. So there's two articles within the, the big thing, uh, which we have linked in the WAN doc here. Um, these... So if you are watching this later on, you can check the WAN doc in the link below the YouTube video or SoundCloud. Yes, there is an audio only, only version of this, actually. Uh, and you'll be able to find it there. Uh, the first article is Article 11, which will require also post in the chat. websites to pay a fee to link to news publications or to use snippets from their articles. So if you're on Facebook and you see an embedded snippet or an embedded link to another article where you've got a little thumbnail image, a part of the title, and maybe a description of the content, Facebook wouldn't be able to show that unless they paid some kind of license fee to the owner of that content. Oh. I think... Yeah, it's pretty like it's ridiculous. As if, as if, That's difficult. as if Facebook is just gonna spend all day, every day licensing all the different pieces of content that get uploaded to the internet that day. It doesn't make any sense. Check out this one, one quick thing. I just want to show. Oops, um, how wonderful this is. We're able to stream, but I can't even like load web pages. Priorities, baby. Yeah, <laughs> we got this though. <laughs> yeah, this the is... stream is working, but I can't see the chat. So. 
You know, I am actually not 100% convinced that it's working, but it might be. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to go Hashtag with... Hashtag pre-recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with yes while this Unintentionally. sits and uh, uh. Apparently, there's an exception in there. Um, people were concerned about link tax, where if you've got some text and part of that text is highlighted because it's a hyperlink, like check out our last review on this here, that you wouldn't be able to have that here hyperlink without paying the tax but i think there's an exemption <laughs> for that oh, okay yeah because okay. that would just break the entire that's what the internet's based on that's what google is based on yeah and and there is another exemption that allows search engines to to use you input snippets because you still want to be found yeah you want to be found because that's good for your bottom line yeah but you don't want to be linked to and you don't want to to lift up other platforms that are aggregators basically because they're just profiting off your content yeah. without paying you enough or like be used as an image sharing host when that's not where you're supposed to be etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah a big part of it is like the amount of money that um, a lot of music artists are not making from youtube that they are making from spotify so okay we're good opponents want these these musicians just to renegotiate with youtube and not kind of stain the whole internet with a yeah. shotgun blast yeah. Okay. So my uh, my web page finally loaded. So Twitch chat people, there's the link. There you go. Sorry about the delay. Yeah. So there's another article. That's Article 11. Now, yeah. then there's also Article 13, which requires websites to filter user submissions and check them against copyrighted work. That is so brutal and would just like crush the forum and everyone's forum. Yes. 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 Any <laughs> online platform that allowed users to post text, images, sounds, or code would, would need to assess and filter that content oh. which has a bunch of brutal implications which are nicely summarized by this like party this pirate party of every single Europe. ugc site user generated content site would just be but this is exactly destroyed. why this is exactly why wikipedia was protesting ah uh, because they are yeah okay exactly they're even pretty good about like exactly making sure that everything's all okay but like Policing everything would be... So here's a list. Insane. Can I send this to you? Son? Can you click on this one? Which one? Source for... Uh, oh, this down there. Boop, boop. So I don't know. You might call this bias because this is definitely one side of the argument here. This is uh, Julia Retta who represents the, the Pirate, the pirate party. party. The Pirate Pack. You can still find good information from... No, knowing is always better. Go down. You can find good information from Scroll there. Scroll down. Consequences, Consequences list. Freedom of expression limited. Obviously. Yeah. Number one. Independent creators harmed. Yeah. And then there's all this like uh, stifling of innovation and stuff because if, okay, let's say you want to have a platform that gets user generated content. If you need to police that, then that either takes a ton of staff or it takes an algorithm. Both those things cost resources. So something like this just solidifies incumbents. And yeah. then bogs bogs small businesses down in in regulation that they just can't handle. Yeah. It's it's really interesting when <laughs> putting a law into place is is getting people to legitimately go to a pirate party website and be like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like <laughs> like, but but that don't necessarily agree with piracy. That's that's an interesting check out th this point surveillance in. risk. Uh, due to high development costs for monitoring technology, this will likely end up uh, like the technology would be outsourced to some major players who make that kind ah. of thing so that there would be f a few large players who are the gatekeepers to everything that's being uploaded. So they have this data of what a large segment of the population is uploading. Yeah, that seems to go... <sighs> okay, it doesn't go against GDPR. Or GDRP. I always forget which way that goes. Uh, but it doesn't go against RP. it. I R think it's RP. RP. I okay. also had the same thing. Coming. Yeah. I always remember the GD, but after yeah. that, I'm like, yeah. uh, it doesn't go against it. But I think it goes against the the point almost, because the the I think I think the point is to try to reduce the amount that you're you're monitored online. If you don't want to be on a certain website anymore, you can ask them to remove all your stuff. If you, your those sites aren't allowed to keep your stuff for way too long. Blah 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 blah. blah. And now it's just like filter everything, <laughs> monitor everything, make sure everything is okay. Which again, it doesn't technically go against it. This would be allowed 
as long as it was disclosed and everything was okay and you could delete it if you wanted, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it's just weird. So it didn't go through for now. Yeah. The, the Wikipedia protest thing was a few days ago. I think it was on Thursday that they had their first vote, but it, it's not over. They're gonna, they're basically going back to the drawing board. They're gonna rework the proposal, and then all of the members of European Parliament get to vote again in September, ten to thirteen. This is a nice long weekend. Yeah, they get to <laughs> be yeah. in a cabin together. <laughs> Also, Play thank beer you, pong and vote Master on this. Disaster, for posting that on the forum. Yeah, that guy's legit. Yeah. A lot of yeah, people in the chat are saying that we look super saturated. We are super saturated. We're not, though. What? I've been told by the people who set it up, it's not actually oversaturated. It's what the colored light on the back wall looks like. Oh. I mean, that is a pretty... That actually does look pretty realistic to this my eye. This is a That's... blue light shining on this blue wall. That's a reddish, pinkish light shining on that red wall and then there's pink leds behind that red wall so the walls just look crazy because they're they're blue and red and then has blue and red being shined plus on them luke is just full of vitality his rosy cheeks are actually <gasps> just full of rose or yeah rose blood I've, bloody I've never been outside yeah but you drink your milk yes yeah 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 i'm getting various right? nodding and thumbs up from it uh, I think it looks it's good. Overexposed, but we think it's because the independent colors of lights okay, on the it looks color. Fine on ours. Okay, oh, I can't is? tell because we have a gaming monitor that is not <laughs> color calibrated at all, so I have no idea what it looks like. On all of ours, it looks good. Okay, cool. We're going with it. Yeah, it's fine. Guys. Best Buy is going to have this on their monitors, on their showroom floor, <laughs> on all their TVs. <laughs> Look at this. It popped, baby. Oh my goodness. That sells TVs. Speaking of, look at this, best segue ever, Elon Musk, apparently, for whatever reason. <laughs> Saves the world and your children. <laughs> From a cave that got flooded. Uh, so if you guys haven't heard of it, uh, there's like, I believe it's a soccer team and their coach yes, yes. was just kind of exploring around for what, I don't know how this ended up happening, but they this were This is in Thailand. Around. Yeah. It's a soccer team of 12 Thai boys yeah. and their coach. Yeah. I don't know why they were doing this, but they were exploring a cave. That's cool. Outside extracurricular activities kind of situation. They hung out too long. They hung out too long in the cave. It flooded. Uh, and they kept on getting pushed back further into the cave because as it flooded more and more and more, uh, they, they tried to keep getting higher ground and getting to more air and all that kind of stuff. So they got Good. stuck. God, way. that's scary. Oh, yeah. Oh, Aren't yeah. they like 2.5 kilometers in there now? Really? I didn't yes. know that. I don't know. Yes. Well, someone else I was talking to told me, Jake said they were like six miles in there. But the thing I read said 2.5K. Um, which is a, a big discrepancy, but regardless, that's scary as man, like yeah, just having to retreat deeper into this thing. So it sounds like at the very least the flooded sections is 2.5 K because it says it, it takes even the most experienced divers up to five hours. That's right. To swim through the 2.5 kilometers of jagged, narrow channels from where the, how, what? I guess you're. Not that many atmospheres down because you're like just barely under the water. Okay. It's gnarly apparently. So they were reported missing on the 23rd of June. They were discovered nine days later by a pair days later by a pair of um, British divers. Yeah, rescue divers. Who could do nothing. Yeah. They just showed yeah. up and they're like, no, you can't come with us because it's too crazy of a dive. Like they have explored the possibility of getting the boys to swim out. Uh, but none of the boys can even swim. They don't know how to swim, let alone dive. Whoa, and even okay. if they were to dive, they, they're trying to get them a special, like, full-face diving mask because normal respirators would probably just get ripped off because it's, like, super tight. So uh, to explain the super tightness, too, uh, these guys have to be, well, they're master divers for sure, but they, they like, would, at a, at a base level, have to have the tech certificate because there's certain points where you can't have your air tank strapped to your back because you oh, can't yeah. fit. So, like, I, I couldn't find if they had to, like, run them si by their side or if they had to just, like, go off air for a second, throw the tank through, swim through, and then hook back up. I don't yeah. know what the situation is, but this is not at all a simple dive. It's advanced enough that, tragically, <sighs> a no. either an ex-Navy SEAL or current Navy SEAL from Thailand actually did die. No. Diving, I think, on his way back. I didn't know that. That yeah. sucks. 
So, and there's a ticking clock. It's not like they can just hang out and keep bringing them food. There's a ticking clock because they're in the middle of the rainy season, which goes for like another three or four months until the end of October, I think. Uh, and there's rain forecasted for the weekend. Up until now, there hasn't been much rain. So the water is going to keep coming and they're running out of places to go. In fact, they might have be, they might be out of places to go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they... and, and, wait, wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> they're running out of oxygen. The oxygen yes. in the chamber yeah. that they're in is down to dangerous levels, like 15% or something like that. So they had 10 rescuers with the boys who delivered food and stuff and are their doctors and nurses. With and the boys. The boys. And they got five of those rescuers just to leave because they're just sucking up too much, too much oxygen. And they're like bringing oxygen tanks in to the chamber just so they can breathe. That's pretty wild. By the way, guys, I can't share screen right now because I have I have no internet. Um, I'm gonna try to go on. <laughs> what? I can't believe this is happening. Look. Oh, good God. <laughs> okay, we're still live. Apparently, I can see it on my phone. Oh. I connected to LTE on my phone. I'm gonna try to go. Oh, oh, you look on. you look so natural. That's not saturated at all. Yeah. Whatever. So, so if they can't walk out. So they can't swim out. So they'd be thinking, well, maybe they could walk out. So they've been pumping water out of there. Yeah, but like freaking tons of it, right? Like millions of gallons. <laughs> yeah. And they've uh, also been trying to dig down to them. They've dug over 100 holes. Some of them are 400 meters deep. And this is where Elon Musk comes in. For two, actually two of those things. One, he thinks he can pump water out faster using some like Tesla battery operated thing. Yeah. And two, he's sending uh, boring company engineers who... He thinks they can dig better, or at least help out in some way. <laughs> so, so insane that he just got involved. He doesn't like, <laughs> he's doesn't like on Twitter. He's like, this is nuts. Just, yeah, so, someone messaged him like, oh, c can you help with this? Elon, help us. And he's like, I'll help in any way I can. And everyone just thinks that's like, oh, well, there's, there's no way he can help. He's saying he'll help in any way he can. Maybe he'll donate a bit and move on and everything. No, he's fine. like, I have he's access like, to the most talented yeah. digging engineers there are. I'm just gonna, you know, ship a team over. We'll we'll try to pump water out faster. And then this was my favorite one. Uh, he also discussed the possibility of inserting a nylon tube into the cave to fill it with air, like a bouncy castle. That's a long tube. So that is a very long tube, 2.5 kilometers, presumably. And then they could just walk hang out, out, boys. Yeah, hang out. What? Yeah, that just still doesn't solve the water oh. problem if they're at the end of the. If they're at the like the deepest chamber they can get to. Yeah. Maybe we can help out. Can we uh, get some hardware in there? Have a LAN. Get... They can have a LAN. And make a video. Yeah. They there can have a go. LAN. Yeah. You can dive in there. Heck yeah. Hosted I, by Luke. I would, I would die. <laughs> if, they, if that Navy SEAL died, I'm screwed. <laughs> oh my god. I'm also a fairly large person, so these confined spaces sounds like... you imagine these kids were in there for nine days? days like before they even had contact like, having no idea if they were gonna yeah. make it out that's insane just drinking the rainwater and not eating they're like all super weak when they get found holy cow so prayers and thoughts Crazy. and all that to those kids at least they didn't I'm, eat each other i'm pretty I know that sounds insane but that's like happened yeah wasn't there like a rugby team that got lost in the mountains or something like, Isn't like a ago? yeah yeah there's a movie i think it's called alive where there's like a plane crash Something like that, yeah. They reference it in The Simpsons. I saw it when I was a kid. That's all I know. But that's like, that was a thing. Anyways, yeah, more rain is expected. There's a bunch of different rescue teams. People from all over are trying to help. And this has been quite documented. So if you want to learn more about it, you can check it out. But yeah, apparently Elon is getting involved because yeah. that's the world right now. That's how <laughs> that works. Something crazy happens. So Elon shows up. I think, uh, I think they're going to make it. I'm pretty ho pretty hope pretty I hope optimistic. So too. I'm yeah. really sad that that Navy SEAL died. You can actually see footage from inside the cave with the original divers who found them took a video when they were speaking to them, and I think they even like were like FaceTiming their families and stuff. Check it out. Maybe they're above the ground. <laughs> there are places where water runs uphill right into the next topic, Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah uh uganda social media is now a taxable activity let me take you oh. on a uh internet spiral journey that i went on this afternoon <laughs> when i was reading about this okay so first i went to like 
Well, by the way, this was posted by Duck Dodgers yes, on the forum, which is where I started on the forum. Yeah. Thanks, Duck Dodgers. Yeah. I get to learn about this. <laughs> Social media is now taxable. What? So, <laughs> so it turns out that what oh. the government has done there has told the ISPs that they must block users from going to certain sites, namely uh, Twitter, Facebook. WhatsApp, WhatsApp, Tinder, <laughs> and dozens of other services. Crucially, Tinder. Yeah, yeah and a ton yeah. of others. They're, they're blocked unless they pay this. It's not really a subscription fee. It's a per day fee yeah. of about five cents US, which is 200 shillings. I didn't know there are multiple African nations whose currency is called a shilling. That's Pirates of the Caribbean stuff. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Maybe they have doubloons somewhere. Doubloons, that would be sweet. So it's five US cents a day. I don't mean to belittle, be insensitive. I just, I never get to hear the word shilling. Anyway, I've already, psh, I'm digging the hole. I'm gonna reach those tie kids with how problem, deep I'm we're... digging. <laughs> this is getting worse. <laughs> um, so it sounds like an insignificant amount of money to us, but keep in mind that there are how many is it? Millions of Ugandans who survive on less than a dollar per day. So for this to be five yeah. cents, or or like the the. Per capita income is six hundred dollars, so a year this would be nineteen hundred dollars if you paid the five cents for every year. There's also an incentive to sign up for a month in advance rather than paying per day. Okay. Okay. So, so that sucks, and you think, okay, that's just the government trying to make some money. Someone, someone in the chat, which I have to read off my phone because what the heck is going on? Um, it says that Portugal is doing a similar thing right now. I hope not. But but back on track. There's. It seems like it's like a like a money grabbing. Like the government's just gonna, yeah. It's just a new tax, and maybe they'll use it for a better internet infrastructure or whatever. But then I thought, wait a second. Uh, countries like this usually have a high amount of disparity, right? So yeah. when you see like the average per capita income, it's probably the case that that average actually doesn't represent that many people. There's probably a lot of people on the high end that boost the average, oh, okay. and a lot of people on the low end. So I thought. Those poorest people who live on a, less than a dollar a day, they're actually probably not affected by this. They're probably not the internet users. Right. Or, or they certainly won't be after. They are affected by this because they won't be internet users after this. So then I thought, is this like a system of control? Is this like a way oh, like for a... people to not be able to go on Twitter, not communicate, not organize themselves, not have protests because they can't go on WhatsApp? They can't communicate with each other, they right? Can't afford it. So then I thought, oh, this is kind of tin hatty. Let's uh, Google. Uganda dictator tyrant censorship buzzwords oh, and so geez. I went <laughs> of course I went to like the Wikipedia and there is a huge laundry list of things they've done in the past Ooh. including uh, arresting opposition members hiring gangs of young un unemployed men to harass and oppress opposition supporters and politicians and critically in February of 2016, the government ordered the mobile service providers to block social media platforms. The government claims that platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, and WhatsApp spread rumors and create unnecessary chaos. The opposition has argued that the ruling was put in place to prevent the public from reporting irregularities in the election process. And, and to, to note the, the opposition thing, Uganda's president is serving his seventh term right now. Yeah, so apparently Ooh. like the, the elections that they have are kind of uh, fishy. Yeah. So, okay. Then I learned... Like anytime you hire <laughs> a gang of people to harass well, your opposite, ostensibly they were fishy. they were hired to keep the peace. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ostensibly. So then I found out that actually Uganda put this in place after neighboring Tanzania put in similar things, which is the next topic here. Yes. They did it a little bit differently. Uh, what did they do? Oh, yeah. Officially okay. dubbed the Electronic and Postal Communications Regulations 2018. Not act or anything, just <laughs> 2018. <laughs> <laughs> there was even a parenthetical thing that I took out of there. That's a huge <laughs> name. But this basically requires online content creators, which includes traditional media websites, online TV, radio channels, but also individual bloggers and bloggers and like regular people, podcasters, yeah. to pay roughly... 2 million Tanzanian shillings, which is 930 US dollars, in registration and licensing fees. So if you want to create content, you have to like get essentially like a, a, lot like of a money. business license. Like, yeah, that's a ton of money, man. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. Even for, for like a, a more wealthy nation, 
where where like your average person has more wealth per capita. That's still a lot of money. If you were like an American with a thousand subscribers, which is hard to get, you might be like, screw this. Oh yeah. Yeah. So creators must uh, not only pay these things, creators must store their contributors' details. So let's say you started like a little news network. Whoever contributes to your site, you have to store that author's details for 12 months and have the means to identify their sources and disclose financial sponsors, which is like super Orwellian. Like transparency sweet, but it's also kind of like, who are the detractors? Yeah. Who are suppo- yeah. Who's supporting them? Um, cyber cafes must install surveillance Financial capitals. sponsors, I don't really mind that too much. But the... Uh... Well, what's, what's involved in, in I, I was storing just their say, contributors' details? No, that part I do Is that like mind. their address and stuff? That part I absolutely what mind. What is that? But the, like, disclosing financial sponsors, I guess it would come down to uh, what details they want about the financial sponsors and how they have to disclose it, I guess. But being like, hey, we're paid by whoever to do mm-hmm. whatever, I don't yeah. really see a problem with that. So but, would... the, but the rest of it, yeah. yeah. Computers details for 12 months, of course, that, that's not great. Cyber cafes must install surveillance cameras. Yeah, and then there's all this vague language like failure to comply with the regulations, which also forbid online content that is indecent or annoying or that leads to public disorder, which is just can be anything if you don't like me. Yeah. Uh, Failure to comply with that is going to result in a 5 million shilling or $2,200 fine. A, a A jail term of not less than a year or both. So you're screwed. Basically. So there's already content creators, YouTubers and stuff in Tanzania who who have given up. Yeah, so Tanzania's GDP per capita, like I was saying earlier, uh, 879 US dollars. So you wouldn't be able to afford, like the, the average person there in would a, not be able to a afford year, a year's the license waiting. alone, let alone if you ever screwed up, that's over two years worth of income Yeah, with no other expenses at all. One of their famous YouTubers called the idea that this is like a tax, the idea of using this as just like another form of taxation, a flimsy, ex- a flimsy excuse. Is he just screwed then? Promoted by the government to restrict free speech. Uh, and it, wait, it gets even interesting earlier. Year. A one blogger, not necessarily a Tanzanian blogger. Uh, no, I think, in, I think it actually was. Yeah, I think I wrote one blogger, but in the story, it actually is this particular woman. Well, I'm worried about that person. So it gets even crazier because they have their own like WikiLeaks there. The Swahili Swahili WikiLeaks site called uh, Jami Forums. How do you say a word that ends in two eyes? Jami. I don't know. But they have this history of, of course, people upload to their whistleblowing site and you don't disclose who uploaded it it's just like people in the know or whatever like they're protected right well now this site has to disclose the details which was of the content creators who contribute definitely one of the reasons why they did that yeah for sure yeah so now it's either well tell us who posted it or get shut down that's scary man pretty brutal i think i have internet again which is great um, and another thing that, where you can tell that it's uh, the, calling it a tax is just ridiculous is that the blogosphere there is pretty small. Oh, yeah. So they wouldn't be getting a significant amount of money from it. No. It's just a, just a means of control. Yeah. Scary stuff. Totally, uh, it's kind of similar to the European copyright directive, but just completely different motivations. But the end result is well, that's similar like, in a way. I'm not going to delve on this for too long because it's not technology and stuff. But have you looked into the things that were in addition? in the, the So Canada recently passed a law. Is it 100% in? I don't think it's 100% in for a little while. But essentially marijuana is like legal and stuff. And you can grow your own and blah, 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 blah. blah. And most of the population up here seemed to be fairly happy about that. But also in that bill, there was a bunch of other things. Uh, like you're, be, you're now allowed to be pulled over without any form of cause or suspicion and like all this other kind oh, of stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you should look into it. It's pretty nuts. Um, 
people are pretty upset about that. And it just got passed through because everyone was just yeah, like, exactly. oh, yes, a bill to make the weeds <laughs> al- uh, now legal. Yes, I will sign. And there's a bunch of other terrible You must clean there. James's room. You ever do that as a kid? Like you write a note and not, that you get someone to sign and on the back it's like, you must be my slave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you just sold me our soul. Um not it. Yeah. Anyways, we should uh, we should we should take a little intermission from the everyone's trying to be evil WAN show. To our sponsors. <laughs> to to talk about sponsors. Fresh books. Fresh books. So uh, you know, if you're trying to run a business in a country where you can do that, um, use Fresh Books. It is a super simple to use invoicing tool that makes it so you can send. Uh, invoices in like less than 30 seconds you can generate them super quick you can check to see if the person that received your invoice has actually read it uh, you can track your time with their timesheet function you can manage your expenses to keep track of who owes you what which is actually super helpful um, when you're when you're starting a new business especially a very small business maybe where you are the only person in the business um, whatever you, your country calls that. Uh, I think it's sole proprietorship here. Yeah. Um, if, if you're running something like that, these little bits of paperwork, just creating an invoice, checking to see if that person received the invoice, checking to see who owes you what, following up on all these different little things can take a huge amount of time. So the fact that you can just generate one in 30 seconds, the fact that FreshBooks can manage all your expenses and expense things for you, you can just take a picture of the receipt, it handles the rest, all that kind of stuff, is actually super freaking helpful. It also has a feature that tells you um, oh, I just read the same note again. It tells you when uh, clients look at their invoice for the first time so that you know that they've seen it at all. If you have any questions and you feel that you need to reach out and ask their staff, you can just do that and you'll speak directly to a real human. There's no phone tree, no escalations, no return calls or anything. You just talk directly to a person, which uh, is great. God, yes. It's nice. It's yes. very nice. Uh, visit freshbooks.com slash when and enter when in the how did you hear about a section to sign up for a free trial and private internet access. PIA. PIA. So I, I believe um, actually VPNs are currently uh, attempting to be used in Uganda to get past the uh, taxation of social services thing. But now Uganda is trying to ban VPNs. Yeah. But hey, if you're a, if you're a viewer from there. You can use this for a little while. Yeah, and then maybe they're, until, they're, until the ISPs ban it out. Brutal quote from their president too, being like, "It's actually more expensive to have a v- VPN than it is just to pay." Ugh. Yeah, except you're a sketchy dude. But whatever. It's Private sketchy. internet access supports a variety of VPN protocols and types of encryption and authentication, allowing you to dial in the exact level of privacy protection you need. It supports apps for Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS. Uh, in here it has Linus, but I assume that means Linux uh, and Google Chrome with support for several. All the machines autocorrect to that. <laughs> yeah. Everything in the building. I'm sure they do. Our personal phones have to too. <laughs> yeah. It's a rule. When you get hired, you have to go into your yeah. like library. Speaking of tyranny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, check it out today in the link in the video description or just like here. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. I almost tickled you. Oh, boy. I was like, eee. That would have been Close. exciting. Um, it's too hot in here for that. It is. Additional features of PIA include IP cloaking, which sounds super sweet. Browsing anonymously, which is sort of the point. Uh, you can avoid data mining, targeted advertising, being blocked from social sites. Uh, you can block unwanted connections, which is cool. An advanced firewall. You can unblock websites, which is what uh, I think a lot, a lot of kids in school and stuff use it for. Uh, because even I, I know some campuses, if you live in the dorms, and have internet to your dorm. There are certain websites that are even blocked there. Mm. And it's just like, dude, come on. Um, and you can save money. And then I think we have Colton here for a special announcement. I see his feet. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh, oh is that the shirt? Actually, hold on, hold on. That this actually looks supposed, sweet. This is supposed to go up a little bit more. Can you, guys... you can't just change that now. You know what, Ed, you have to change it. Hey. You can't change that. Yeah. Hey, Wan, show what's going on. That looks great. <laughs> this is the LTX shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. We're gonna have another. That actually looks there. really good. So, do you guys Wait, know about LTX? Up, what, can I have that pin? This is the tech link to pay. That's a pin. sick pin. This pin is very, very good. So, we're also gonna be selling. I'm wearing a suit to LTX. I'm wearing this on my lapel, like a gentleman. Are Ooh. you going to? There you go. Are you gonna wear a suit? 
I'm wearing something. I want. I want to wear one of those shirts. I'm wearing nothing. Like what are you doing? Oh, He's getting you to you talk to this. Something? Anyways, yeah, pretty much. So, this is LTX the most guys. Part of the stream. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We rehearsed this. So, <laughs> LTX. Edsel, what are you doing? <laughs> Stop. In the frame. That's great. Awesome. I'll sit like this and get back pain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, LTX live event. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard about this before. July 14th, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. You guys should come. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have a 20 PC LAN. Corsair is gonna be there. Asus is gonna be there. We're gonna be doing uh, reviving our triple headed VR thing. Nice. We're doing that, which will be. Oh, sick. we're at the same booth. Hell yeah! yeah. It's Wancho all day, baby. Nice. <laughs> The nah show. Yeah, exactly. Nah, 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 so, nah. kind of trying to do like co-op games stuff there. We're gonna be having a contest for whoever can get the highest score in Minesweeper will win like a brand new, You're like kidding. a Titan XP, <laughs> or, like a 1080 Ti. That's um, sweet. I used to actually play that quite often. I can't enter, so good no. luck. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We're gonna have like a bunch of systems on display. It's gonna be really cool. And then we're actually gonna have merch on site to buy, including the shirt for those of you that didn't get it with your ticket, and including a secret merch. That very few people know about. Oh, oh yes, yes. Oh, it's gonna Secrets. be Secrets. It's gonna be sick. We're only making a hundred. Is James? Oh, idea. it's gonna be the sickest. I want yeah. one. I don't I mean, know what it is. Oh, it's you not want really, one. It's not that secret. You it involves. It involves. Hey, is it? Okay, that's right. a spoiler. All right, fine. Uh, we're also gonna have two unboxings at the event, which are also secrets. Um, Linus doesn't oh. even know what they are, so that should be oh. interesting. So he'll that's drop them. Cool. He'll yeah. drop them regardless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone's gonna be there. Uh, if you guys are coming to LTX and you see any of us. Come say hi, come chit chat. This whole point of the event is that we're Get a picture, there to hang trip. out and chill with, so it's gonna be really cool. Yeah. Lots of stuff on display. And there's yeah. other guests. There's other yeah, other coming? other guests. So other YouTubers that are probably gonna be there is gonna be Jay's Two Cents. Nice. Steve from Gamers Nexus. Yeah. Nice. And Barnacles. Nice. So yeah, and I'm sure I'm missing some people. Uh guys from Memory Express are gonna be there. Uh, we should get Jimmy from Spectrum Glasses to come. I'm probably I'm probably missing people. Yes. Yeah. Why I mean, not? You can ask. I don't I don't oh. yeah. Bring your friends. So, <laughs> if you want to come, go to ltxexpo.com, pick up your tickets, and we'll see you there. People are asking if okay. we're live streaming LTX. So, oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> I'm going to be live streaming parts of it. So, uh, probably on Twitch. So, right here, we'll be streaming not the entire event, but we will do a few walkabouts and, yeah, capture a few things. Details on that coming soon. I'm also, sure that'll be okay. Great. But no replacement for being there smelling us. Wow. Wow. Just getting your nose right yeah. up in there. Pheromones, you can't actually detect, but that yeah. influences your behavior. Yeah. You'll be forever changed by what you inhale at this event. <laughs> uh, well, you choose. What do you want to talk about for the next 20 minutes? I don't know. I think, is there anything happy? Is there anything that's like, uh, government does something that isn't crushing their citizens? Um, well, this is kind of neutral, I think. And I think we have to talk about it because it's pretty big. Many of you may know that earlier this week, Facebook's hate speech algorithms, yeah, erroneously or maybe not erroneously, oh, uh, they took down a post that contained a a excerpt from the American Declaration of Independence. So yeah. <laughs> leading up to the Fourth of July, I forgot who it was. There's a Facebook page in Texas that was posting snippets from the declaration so they broke it up into 12 different parts and every day they're they're uploading a part and i think it was the like 12 on, days of independence basically and then on day nine or something like that they got a message saying that your content has been taken down so the message didn't specifically say which Why? content oh, okay so it could have been any excerpt but they believe that it's this excerpt that contains if their individual posts wouldn't they know because one of them just wouldn't be there it sounds like the easiest thing to figure out mm. ever. True. You are a critical thinker. Um, they did eventually like apologize and put it back. So, but um, the post that got flagged was this little part that uh, refers to Native Americans as merciless Indian savages. <laughs> so you can, ch you can check out the full quote by Googling it or like looking on our doc. My question to you, Luke, is should Facebook put it back? Uh, wow. This is, <laughs> okay. Um, that's okay. One. All right. Technically, I am American. Some people know this. I have passports for both countries. I was born in Canada. I've spent every single residential day in Canada. I've never had a residence in America, but I technically have both citizenships. 
Um, and technically, I'm like sort of more American than I am Canadian because I'm technically a second class Canadian citizen. Mm. Meaning the government can deport me at any time for any reason without a trial. Yes, yeah, so watch is it, buddy. Great. Yeah, I, I do have to watch it because I can <laughs> be kicked out at any time. Um, and, but I have a full American citizenship, not like a second class one or anything. So I, I'm technically like more stable there, even though I've never lived there. It's weird. Um, at, but I didn't know that was in there. That's a uh, it's pretty aggro. Yeah, it's, a, re- <laughs> it's really interesting because I it's think very aggro. It's not like the it, like we've got another story that we'll talk about in a second where an algorithm kind of flagged something and it was obviously just not programmed well whereas this you could argue uh maybe should have flagged this but then because of the status of the document that's it's like thing. well like this racism is allowed because it's an important document well certain historical things right like it's like i well, this is weird we're going down a weird path for the land show this is not technology um but i i don't think history should be changed personally um like i don't think a book should be edited that was published in the past because I don't think it's a, because I think knowing mistakes that happened in the past is a valuable thing. Mm -hmm. I think knowledge is more important than other things generally. So then like, I don't know. Just because the content isn't abridged, does that mean that it should be allowed to be broadcast? Just because it isn't abridged? Like they don't post it and have part blurred out. They don't change the the book. Declaration of Independence is still like, is that, that's still an important document, right? It's still an important government document. Yeah. So I don't really think it should. No, I think it should be left alone. So they should be a lot. But is that the same as like leaving it alone? Is that the same as broadcasting it? I don't know, man. All right. So here's a I, I, easier okay, one. So personally, I think I think they should be allowed. I think it should depend on the on you know, the context. Personally, if I given the way, so Facebook is its own private entity. It's not a government thing. So they can do whatever they want. They could they could be they could be like you know what. No one's ever allowed posting that on this website. Mm-hmm. And then people that believe in that strongly would just not use the website. It's a private thing. But with their stance on things in general, I think it would depend on... So this is, again, I just have to give an opinion based on what I think they would do. Because I think they're allowed to do whatever they want. Um, given their stance on things, it would depend on the context. If this person was like screw these people because it says this in the Declaration of Independence, mm. then that I think Facebook would then step in and want it taken down. Possibly. If, if they're just posting like, this is the 12 days until Independence Day, we're going to slowly walk people through the Declaration of Independence because it's fairly long and no one's going to read this whole post in one little digestion thing, but they might like it and share it every day as we go through. And then they just happen to get to that part. I th- personally think Facebook would be fine with that because I don't think the intent is there. I don't think there was malice cool. built into it. I'm not even sure if there was malice if they get rid of it. Maybe. <sighs> so here's an easier, more cut and dry one. Uh, I think this happened, yeah, the same week. Google Adset, uh, AdSense. AdSense. <laughs> Google AdSense <laughs> decided that a web page about a decades old bill about sexual abuse was adult content. So, and it decided that this web page therefore should not be able to show ads anymore. So the page, which has been up for six years, contains strictly legislative information. (laughs) It's just all legal stuff about a bill called the Child Sexual Abuse and Pornography Act of 1986. So that's a lot of hot words. And the algorithm was like, this is bad. Blocked. So then the the person who runs this website, which is uh, (laughs) govtrack.us, which is like a legislative research and tracking website, uh, that person reached out to Google and tried to make an appeal to like get the site back up and right away got a response uh, saying no. Denied. <laughs> denied. The request to unflag the page was denied. And therefore, they still can't run ads. The The site gets like 37 grand a year from running ads. Whoa. It's an important site. This particular page, uh, because the bill is so old, doesn't get visited that much. So it's kind of a drop in the bucket for them. But if it wasn't, um, so it's just funny because you can tell because the site's been up for so long that they just made a tweak to the algorithm, yeah, which made this uh, get flagged. Which I think by it's it. not really a, a manual thing right now; it's all machine learning. But still, the machine learning algorithm was like, you know what? I hate it. 
(laughs) (laughs) Child porn. Jesus. Yeah. I'm not surprised it got picked up by something, to be completely honest. Well, it's just funny how they you can design and automate a system, make these little tweaks, and it just propagates and affects so many people and affects their bottom line, and it affects their like their livelihood. But it's necessary because you just can't have humans going through all these things. It's just too much yeah. content. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we should have less content on the internet. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> these Tanzanians are onto something. We're making content right now, man. Don't kill our own jobs. Speaking of nothing, because there's no segue for this. We're uh, finally some uh, some some news that you guys are probably like very directly interested in. AMD B450 boards are coming out. Speaking of yeah. Luke being bored. <laughs> Which, uh, anyways, uh, AMD has still not formally announced the B450 chipset, but pre-orders and listings for B450 boards from three major motherboard manufacturers have already appeared in Austria and Germany. Some stores list some of these motherboards as in stock, but also note that the product will be ordered from their warehouse or distributor after an order is placed, which is essentially like they're saying that they they have, that store is confirming that they have availability. It's not in that store's own warehouse, but their distributor has some and they can get it from them. But it still implies that you're going to be able to get it in a few days. Soon, so that soon, yeah. makes it seem like this announcement's going to be a really... Yeah, the Asus really Prime B450M-A seems to be available immediately, and many of the boards don't appear on the manufacturer's websites yet, which is weird. It, <laughs> it could be a retail leak, which happens sometimes, but it seems fairly unlikely. My question is, why do these kinds of things always seem to happen in Germany? In Austria, yeah. That happened not that long ago, too. It's always Germany. Yeah. There's always like these German sites where I'm always translating web pages. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, wasn't it like Walmart Canada that leaked all of Bethesda's E3 stuff? <laughs> I, I don't remember what it, like, uh, uh, what, what was it? Uh, I can't remember the name. Post-apocalyptic. Fallout? No. Oh. Uh, that makes sense, but no. R- Rage? Rage. Rage 2. Is it Rage? The Rage, Rage Carry 2? <laughs> Do you Rage remember two. that? <laughs> Rage Carry 2? No. Yeah, it was a movie. It was the sequel to Carry. Oh, it came out in like the late 90s or 2000s. Yeah, Rage 2 was uh, no mic. It's just one person spamming no mic, but everyone seems to be hearing what I'm saying. He's right. You're Luke and I'm James. There's no mics here. Yeah, none. There is absolutely no... uh, Not a single mic. Mic. But yeah, uh, Bethesda's Rage 2 was leaked by Walmart somewhere. I'm not necessarily sure where. Oh, we're on the wrong banner. Whatever. It's not like that sponsor is going to be too mad at us. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. That's that's cool. More uh, more AMD boards coming. Sonos files for initial public offering. Uh, they filed with an offering size of a hundred million dollars. A placeholder amount used to calculate fees that is likely to change. I don't know. Would you buy Sonos stock off the bat? I, I because of that thing I mentioned earlier, I can't really invest in stock market because both countries don't want to tax me. So would you? Who knows? Uh, if I could, I would want to do way more research into them because I don't know enough about them right now. Mm-hmm. I would not feel comfortable right now, but I would want to do more research. It seems like uh, Apple and Google are trying to very aggressively take over that space, and neither of them seems to be buying Sonos right now. So I would be concerned. Well, that's the interesting part about it is. They are going public almost because of that. Because of the competition in the space, they need money. And remember, having a public offering is a fundraising activity, essentially. So, I don't know. I don't think I would. Yeah. They're, they're in a weird spot right now. But What's cool about their stuff, though, is uh, later this year, on their Sonos Beam, which just came out, which is a sound bar, it has, the, it has Alexa right now. Soon, it's going to have Alexa and Google Assistant on the same oh. device, which I've, I've never seen. I don't, think, I don't think there's a device out there that has that. It'd be pretty cool just to hail one assistant for one task and then just hail, that, hail a different ex- uh, assistant. Because there, there is quite a few things that the overlap isn't very good. Yeah. Like there's, there's, there's in, in the Venn diagram, there is definitely the outer circles. Yeah. Um, They're also going to be supporting uh, Siri, but I... I didn't read specifically that Siri is going to be on the same device as these other assistants. 
Okay. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was like the Apple model and then the everyone else model because I don't see Apple wanting Siri to be on the same device as Google Assistant. It's just too much room for people to be like, hey, you, answer this question. Hey, you, fail at answering the same question. Right. Side by side. Yeah. Uh, speaking of... I'm just going to go, hey, you. Uh, Seagate, I don't know. Seagate announces a mainstream SSD drive. That's pretty neat. The smallest model is going for $74, uh, which I believe yeah, is two. 250 gigs. And the one terabyte model is on sale for 299 How about them Steam leaks? You got to click the link, though. You got you to see. Okay. You get to see. All right. Which games have the most players? But it but it only works for people that have achievements outside of games that have developer achievements specifically. Yeah. yeah. So that's about half. I think it's actually over half. Thirteen thousand out of twenty-three thousand. Yeah. Yeah. About half of the games on there. So uh, you can see a list. I think you went to the wrong link actually. Did I? If you go to the R's, go to the R's one. Darn it, medium. You guys are gonna see the doc for a second? Oh my goodness! Don't look at my doc. Oh. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Uh, get it, get it. Uh, it's leaking okay. steam. That's pretty pretty <laughs> dang good, actually. Oh. It pleases me. What? Is what it not here at? either? Oh, oh, my. I failed you. Ah, Team Fortress 2 is in the lead. Oh, hey. Is this going to work? Hey. Oh, no, man, it's on here. Go farther. Where? Farther down. They've got this stuff. There it is. Oh, hey. Team Fortress 2, Counter-Strike, PUBG. Player estimate. More people playing TF2? What? Really? It's all time, though. Oh. It's all time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't really care. I am kind of surprised by some of this stuff. Like RoboCraft? I've never even heard of that. Apparently, I just downloaded this CSV suite. I needed it for sure. Gears well, mod is that high? Wow. Paladins. I thought they were super dead. They have a lot of players. Did they go free or something? Well, what if it was just from the time period that it was popular? Was Paladins ever popular? I've never heard of it. I've heard of it, but I didn't think it ever did very well. Maybe it's in, it's big in a different market or something. Is Steam like a global thing? Do people use Steam in India? And I think so. Brazil and stuff? I think so. Pretty sure. Can we let these people go on with their lives now? I think we can. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into the show. Uh, hopefully, we didn't make you hate your government because uh, this was a this was an interesting WAN show. Um, but uh, yeah, this is not the way. It's not. Have a good one. Bye. Can you make your best sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fresh Bugs! Yes, bud. Thank you, PIA! PIA! Thank you, LTX. Thanks, Colton! Hey, what a good boy! He's a good boy. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> good boy. <laughs> <laughs>